So you want to make a diamond willow walking stick. Good for you. My name is Nathan and this video is the third in a series of videos that will teach you where to find diamond willows, what to look for, how to carve them, and finally how to finish them. Let's get started. In the last two videos, I explained where to look for diamond willows and what to look for. Today, I'm looking for some fresh willows I can use to demonstrate how to carve. I'm on the lookout for a good green willow, a solid dead one, and anything I can find in between. Before we get into carving, let's talk about the tools we're going to need. So let's begin with just discussing various kinds of blades. You can get by carving with something as simple as this little guy here. It's a locking blade. Um, this Leatherman here, same thing, um, although I don't know why, but this particular one doesn't lock. But uh, both will work just fine if all you're doing is carving and all you're doing is trying to remove bark, okay? Um, this one here, this is a Gerber. Uh, the difference with this one is it has a straight blade. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, and it's locking, but it works just fine. Um, and then here's your classic Swiss Army knife, okay? All four of these options are perfectly fine for trying to carve with. Um, they get the job done and uh, Anyway, this one here, the best thing about the Gerber is that it has a straight blade as opposed to a curved blade. Okay, the curved blade adds a little bit of cut into the wood that you wouldn't necessarily want to, to have. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one up there just to kind of put it aside. Um, these are carving tools. So you can get these at a hardware, not a hardware store, at a like a plywood store, a wood supply store. Um, straight blades, right? The idea there, you can control the blade a little more when it's straight. Um, and uh, we'll come back to that later. Okay, and one thing to note, so this is a very common knife, a buck blade. Um, it has a very curved edge. It does, it cuts a deep gouge into wood when you're trying to carve with it. Not ideal for carving. Um, they're great for hunting and skinning and all those other things, but it, it's not the best. It'll still do the job. Um, this one here I just threw in there because it's a really long blade. Long blades are not great for carving. Great for swiping or stabbing, but not so great for, for carving. Uh, they tend to make more mistakes than they do uh, solve problems. Okay, now let's get into the goods. So this here is an old timer carving jack. So notice it's got a little straight blade on one side, a couple other tools inside, but the real kicker is this guy right here, the curved blade. Okay, more on that a little later. Um, the curved blade is a lifesaver. This one doesn't have a locking blade. Um, and so the most expensive solution to carving diamond willow has got to be this guy right here, the flex cut carving jack. Okay, and the reason why it's so good um, has to do, well, okay, there's the, there's the, yeah, there, that's the logo, yep, yeah, you got it. The, obviously, there's that curved blade again, really high quality steel, um, and it locks in place, which is nice. Um, and then the uh, carving blade here, a nice straight blade, 
also locks in place. Okay, very sturdy, uh, very durable, and just excellent all around blade. I think I'm gonna start off with this guy. This is a pretty straightforward carving blade. It's nice because it fits in my hand. And we're gonna get started with the easiest one, the green stick. What I like about cutting with green sticks is most of it's peeling. It's not really cutting. I just get get a cut started. I just pull it. Probably the most satisfying part. Okay, so here's a little pro tip. So I don't know if it's showing up on camera very easily, but when I look at this with my eyes, I don't know if the camera shows it. This is a very yellowy bark, and it's only at the very center where it's white. So my goal is to remove anything that's gonna be yellow. And when I did this the first time, when I made sticks, I thought I would, you know, maybe it would give it some character or something like that. So here's why you remove the yellow. So this is a finished stick. One that I've got a little bit more work to do on it still, but I'm happy with most of how this thing turned out. It's got a lot of mementos in it. I use some uh, epoxy resin to get things into it. But anyway, my point that I'm trying to make, this is a green stick. When I remove the bark, you can see all that kind of orangey stuff. That stuff looked kind of yellow and it looked really close to white. But when I didn't remove it, it kind of ended up being all splotchy. Yeah, some people are probably like, yeah, but that looks cool. I like it. Okay. If I was going for an, a completely clear stick, it looks a little bit um, out of place. And so if you want it to have that kind of clear, um, not blotchy look to it, then you'd need to make sure that you remove all of that outer layer of bark to get that look. Otherwise, you're gonna have kind of blotches all over it. And uh, maybe that's not what you were looking for. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. Yeah, that's easier. It does no good to try and pick at that with a blade. Okay, and I would even suggest stay away from using Dremels and that sort of thing. It's a convenience and it can speed up the process, I guess. Um, but I've found if you want to be a good carver, you want to be a, a real carver, get yourself one of these with a scoop blade. Okay. It makes all the difference. Okay, so this is going to be hard to show. You can see there, it cleans out now. Those diamonds are really nice. And then you start exposing that darker wood. Okay. It's much easier to do with this little scoop. And it takes a little bit to get used to knowing how to, how to cut. You'll see that I'm cutting towards myself. Um, so you gotta get used to knowing, you know, how much pressure is okay and you just have to play with it for a bit. But once you get used to knowing how the the scoop works, it, uh, it does save time, in my opinion. Okay, it opens up those diamonds really nice and you get that, expose that uh, darker wood underneath. I've seen some people where they leave the diamonds and they don't scoop them out and then they just clean off everything out. That's a different look, it's a matter of opinion. I prefer to expose that kind of brownish darker wood underneath because I think it looks better. So just a note about uh, technique. Nothing wrong with uh, carving t 
towards yourself, as long as you're, you've got things set up, okay, in a, in a safe way. So I always think, if I'm carving towards myself, I should never be pulling, I should never be jerking. It should be in kind of one smooth cut. It should happen very easily. So especially green sticks, um, I'm much more comfortable carving towards myself. Um, with dead sticks, I'm gonna be more reluctant because it's gonna, it's gonna catch, right? And so with a green stick, I'm not as worried about that because it's so smooth. Um, especially if you do this right away, if you get your green stick and start removing that bark as soon as you bring it home or within the first you know, week of you bringing it home, uh, you'll find you know, the process is a lot easier. Um, I prefer being able to carve towards myself if I can. Um, just to demonstrate. Okay. So when I start carving towards myself here, it's starting to catch and I, and I keep feeling like, oh, I gotta back it up, okay? Because it's catching. So um, my, my advice is if you're gonna carve towards yourself, um, kind of sit almost like bow-legged, okay? Get your arms nice and wide like that, okay? <clears throat> and just short little, little cuts just to get that done. It's the reason why it's preferable because when I carve away from myself, okay, I tend to like jerk a lot more. And when I jerk, it's gonna like catch and cut and it's gonna leave big uh, planes in the wood. And I don't really want that, I want it more controlled, okay? And if you learn how to cut towards yourself safely at a nice distance, you notice I'm doing it now, but it's just like this. It's just simple little curvy cuts like that. Okay, I'm safe. I'm not. I'm not gonna slip. Even if I do slip, it's gonna go over here. Okay. Um, now, when it comes closer like this, that's where, you know, <laughs> carving on a, a dead stick, I start to get nervous. Okay. So I'll be much more controlled, much shorter. Okay. And carve away. It might be just a like. Yeah, you can't see that. When I carve away, it might just be more of a scrape, but I certainly want to be careful not to like dig in and push when I'm carving away. You know, you've probably, if you were, I was a young boy one day, once upon a time, and we, whenever we got a stick, we got a knife, of course, the first thing we do is whittle it into a point because what good is a stick unless it's pointed? So we would, do the like, whoa, 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 like big, big motions to like carve off as much as we could. Um, we don't wanna do that with this stick. We wanna take off just the bark and not go too much deeper than the bark. And that's why these like careful cuts towards yourself need to be um, utilized as best as you can. And I suspect a few things about this one. So, right there you can see where I cut it. It's got, uh, those are definitely gonna be green. And I can tell you right now when I trim that off. Okay, so that's, what I'm curious about is if it's green down here. Right away, when I start cutting, I see that darker brown. And that tells me it is not green, at least not in that spot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go all the way around and see if there's any spots on this stick where it is solid green. So I'm gonna carve kind of like all the way around. Cause I kind of want to know if it's green here, if there's green stuff growing here, then possibly there's green stuff down below, but it's kind of pointless to go any further. Well, it's not pointless. Just curious is all. The reason I want to know if it's green, I think I've said it before, but I'll just reiterate it. If it's green, the color of the wood will be a lot lighter, It'll be a light uh, wood. And when I finish that wood, it'll have that light um, tone, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, keep making noise, yeah. So 
not seeing anything green. At least not from what I'm cutting here. Pretty brown. And that's fine. I know that this up here above will be green and that'll have a really cool look to it. The other cool thing that's happening is sometimes you get these different tones of uh, brown and this is no exception. So you can see as I'm carving this right now, there's kind of a lighter a lighter brown and then a darker brown. The two tones I'm talking about are this here and this. What this is, is this part here was green for a while, while this part was was dead for a lot longer. Okay, so this, this section here, this lighter color, um, was probably feeding a stick further down, further down the stick, feeding like a branch um, with fresh nutrients for a while, and then it died off. Meanwhile, the rest of this was dead. It's one of the cool features of diamond willows is they'll, they'll keep on living off of the dead sticks. And that creates awesome like two-tone effects on the stick. And so that's kind of what's going on in this one, which again, makes this a pretty good candidate for, you know, a choice just because of the, the variety that we're gonna see throughout the stick. We'll probably see that lighter dead part kind of twist throughout the stick all the way down. And of course we've got this nice light stuff up top, which looks great. I've got a stick here that uh, the bark was removed. Um, so I stripped the bark, this would be almost six months ago. Um, and actually, after I stripped it, I just left it. Um, and it's good that I did because I'm showing what's going on below. So this stick here was green all the way up to this point. Okay, so all the way up to here was green. And then beyond that point was dead. Okay, so everything below, which I still haven't finished carving, is, uh, yeah, it's got, it's a little bit rotten, not totally rotten though. So it's, it's a good like combination. Um, and this one's got, got a lot of little nibbies and schnibbies I gotta get rid of. And I haven't taken out the diamonds yet, but I'm not worried about the diamonds when I'm um, stripping a green stick as much, because okay? the diamonds often, if it's really green, if the entire thing is green, then I'll take the diamonds out because sometimes those diamonds will cover up um, some areas that are still green and they need some time to, to breathe. But uh, this one, because it was that two-tone, you know, back and a little bit of both, um, I just needed to get it cleaned, or like get it stripped, and then uh, let it uh, cure for, for six months. This one's ready to be stripped, so there's a couple of cool things I'm gonna do here in a second. But before I do that, I'm gonna kind of <clears throat> show off one of my favorites. So this is a rare find, this particular stick I'm about to show. This would be kind of like the ultimate find when you're looking for, you know, something that has just beauty and uh, a combination of that dark and light. Um, you don't always find that. So this one, this particular one does a lot of that. So I'll just kind of show it to you here. So here's the top of it. Now this one is actually sanded right now. So that's why it's kind of spoiling a bit of the end. Um, so because it's sanded, it looks way smoother than it would if it were carved. Okay, but this particular one, um, as you follow it down, you can see it's got just awesome, awesome diamonds. Okay, one of the best ones. And here's where that, here's where the white, um, the, the live part of this one ended. Okay, there's two spots actually. There's this little schniblet sticking out there. I was trying to decide if I was going to cut that off or leave it, but I think I'm going to leave it. And then this one down here where it ended. And then below that is this lighter, well not lighter, but a darker brown, okay, than the lighter color up above it. All right. And I've carved that to a peak at the top there. That's, that's intentional, okay, just to keep this little diamond in there. Um, yeah, this is an awesome stick. It has, 
if there's one complaint, it's that, that you know the handle is a bit of an awkward place, but your thumb can go in there just fine. Um, it is holdable, and so it's not like it's. I've had some sticks where this part is really hard. There's nowhere to put your hand. It's really awkward. Whereas there's this has a place to put your hand, and it's just got that that two tone thing going on. It's just it's just so beautiful. Anyway, <clears throat> I had to show this guy off because it's this is one of my prized pieces, definitely. So I'm just gonna do kind of a close up demo of cleaning out these these diamonds. You can kind of see it. Uh, one of the things I've noticed with, especially with green sticks, uh, you get the occasional diamond willow where the inside part, the meaty part of this diamond, um, you clean it off the bark it's actually the same color, like that light color. This one, of course, does, is, is dark on the inside, which is good, that's what you want. But sometimes you get them light in the center, and, and then that's a good question. Why did I clean out that uh, beautiful bark when it was light in the inside and now it all looks the same? I don't know what to tell you with that, but uh, <laughs> I would... <coughs> We definitely say that um, that's a, an exception to the rule rather than, you know, that's very uncommon to have it light inside the diamonds. It's usually dark like that. Okay. And I go through the entire piece. Um, one of the bigger reasons why I think it's good to clean out the diamonds is because you get some of this rotten uh, wood, even on a, a live stick. The oh, I got a nice sliver there, sweet. Uh, the wood inside the diamonds is is dead and sometimes rotten. And I've had a few times when I clean up the diamonds and you find little worms and stuff in there. So I, I think it's. I mean, once you seal this, once you seal this up with your finisher, the, those worms aren't. <laughs> I ain't going to live, put it that way. Um, but it's good to kind of open up some of those holes, and there's a good example right there. Little hole, little wormy. Probably lives in there. I was hoping I didn't go poking around in here. There's a good chance he's dead, but, well, no. I've, I've had plenty of dead sticks where I open it up and there's a live worm squirming around. Um, and then this is up to you. How much of this you want to clean off? Do you want that entirely, you know, worm free? Are you okay with a little bit of that? You notice that when I poke some of this stuff out, it's all sawdusty. Okay, because it's all the worm, worm holes. Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm going to need to do that for each and every one of these. Okay. And just looking to get rid of that top layer, the bark layer, and expose that uh, inner layer a little bit. The goal, of course, is to beautify the stick. It's already beautiful, it just needs to be awakened somehow. That's the fun part about being a carver is that you get to decide how much you're going to show and what you're going to keep inside, keep a secret, and so on and so on. So you'd go through and do each and every one of your uh, diamonds. On a stick like this, I got a lot of schnivvies. So I'm going to hit those with a saw, just, just the same saw that I used to to cut these guys down. Okay, some of these schnibbies stick out a little farther than others. So there's a big schnib, schnob. That one's gonna need some, um, I don't know, just needs to get cut off. 
these little teeny tiny guys. So this is a good example of um, how to strip a stick properly. One of the good reasons why uh, you get a green stick because when you pull off the green stick, you don't leave any cut marks, okay? As opposed to when I carve a dead stick, you notice each and every one of those is like an individual plane. And so sanding that means I've got to get rid of all of those planes that I've basically put into the stick. When it comes to this guy, there's less planes to worry about. There's, a, there's, a, there's bumps and ridges that I'm gonna have to think about how I'm gonna do that. I've always wanted to do a stick like this without sanding it, like strip it and then not sand. It's probably impossible, but like this one, I'm definitely gonna sand because I, I love where this handle kind of fits on this, this one. I, I like the placement of it. So I'm gonna sand that. I may even put a rope handle on that, but that is for a future video. So something else worth mentioning, especially when you've got a rotten stick or an old stick, um, sometimes this white um, wood here can be a little deceiving. Um, and I've found that um, when you shave it, it'll tell you kind of what's, what's going on. So this part right here, this here's quite rotten. It's really soft and it just comes up super easily. I want to get rid of that, okay, and I want to find, with the blade, as I'm scraping away here, I want to find the wood that isn't soft, that kind of resists a little more, okay. The reason for that is that that particular wood there that's too soft is so, so rotten that it's gotten almost like powdery. It won't take long, and then that wood is going to become a powder instead of uh, have any any sense of wood to it anymore and so sometimes I'll I'll just keep going until I get to that harder center okay it doesn't always look the best so when you find that white wood make sure that it's you know good solid white wood um, and not rotten white wood um, you'll know just by kind of touching it with the blade if it kind of um, comes off and it feels like the blade sinks in really easily, that's a sign that it's it's a bit too rotten. Okay, One maybe add-on that I didn't say before is be thorough, okay, and, and be willing to, you know, to be picky is one of the things that when I teach uh, students about this is they get really frustrated when they bring their stick up to me after doing like a minimal amount of carving and they're like, am I done? And I look at it and it's like, you got a lot more to do. And then they do like a tiny little bit and they're like, am I done? If you find that doing this is, you know, bothering you, then maybe you should think of doing something else. But I would say one of the things that you need to get used to is being picky. You want to do a good job, uh, make sure that you, you know, are thorough and check it over. Um, especially before you move on from the carving stage to the next stage. So something I, I didn't really bring up, but I, I think it's worth mentioning, is there's really not a whole lot of carving that you're doing at this stage. Um, mostly the, the, the correct term would be stripping. You're stripping the wood or the bark off of the diamond willow, preparing it to be finished, sanded, and then a finishing coat of, of whatever you choose to put on it. Um, and so there's not a lot of carving. Now, having said that, um, I have done some carving projects. I've done, you know, I did a lion for a client once. I did a skull for a friend of mine. I did a, um, I'm working on an old man um, I've done different variations. I've just experimented with the carving. Carving diamond willow is hard. It's like if you're going to carve, meaning you're making something, um, get ready and wear gloves because di diamond willow, it, all willow, is a really hard, very tough bark and uh, it's not very forgiving. So, um, but it can be carved. 
It's just, we're not carving, we're stripping. We're taking the bark off um, in preparation for something else. So just keep that in mind. Um, and, and then, as I said earlier, be picky when you're stripping. So, uh, you know, I think it's a good rule to really try and remove every evidence of the bark because anything you leave behind is noticeable. Okay, so get get in there really close, have a, have a look at everything before you move on to the finishing stage. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I look forward to making the next video, the finishing video. Uh, I've got a number of sticks sitting at various stages of being finished. And so uh, that'll be a fun video to, to make very soon. And I look forward to seeing you on that one. Yeah, if you like this content, if you're enjoying this, um, you know, spread the word. Uh, I'm really trying to grow this channel. This is one of my goals for 2022 is to increase the awareness of my OAF channel so that uh, people out there can get a, a, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe people like this stuff, just throwing that out there. And if people, if you do like it, of course, make sure you like it. Um, obviously you're watching this, you've probably already subscribed. I don't like begging for subscriptions, so I'm not going to do that, but I do want people to know that this is here and want to get the word out. So spread the word, spread the love, like the video, and we'll see you on the next one.